we're looking at substitution method and, and we're using it instead of the graphing method. And we know that if we were to graph two lines and they did not touch, that would be a, a no solution. Okay, and that's easy enough to see when we graph it. And graphing's okay, but graphing will not work for every single type of problem that we have. So we started looking at the substitution method. And we looked at the basics, but how do we tell if when we're using the substitution method that we run into a no solution situation? Well, basically if we went through and we put this 8x into that y right there, and start running it down, uh, trying to simplify, you know, 2 times 8x, 16x, and then negative 16x plus 16x, combining these like terms, we got 0x. It is this situation right here that it should signal that this is a no solution problem. Why? Well, first off, let's look at it this way. x can be any number. What number can I times 0 by to get a positive 6? Well, that's impossible. That's a mistake. That's an error. That means it's not going to happen. That is a no solution setup. Okay? So if you've got zero times one of the variables equaling something that's not zero over here, it's not going to happen. You will never be able to find it. Now, let's just say that you, you ignore my advice to be on the lookout for this type of situation. If you divide it by zero, oh, great, that's, that's what, zero? And, and then we divide six by zero, guess what's going to show up on your calculator? It's going to show an error. If you get an error message on your calculator, you're done. You should just write down no solution with this little no solution symbol right there. And that's going to work, okay? Because basically it's going to be showing you that there should be some sort of like parallel line situation going on there. Um, let's take a look at, at something else too, though. We know that if we had the equations in slope-intercept form, we could compare the slope and the y-intercept. So if we literally transform this standard form equation into slope-intercept form, getting that y all by itself, it's going to be very interesting because you basically get this, 2y equals 16x plus 6, you know, because we just slide that 16x to the other side by adding it. Then we could divide everything by 2, and y would equal 8x, notice that they're the same, but then the 6 divided by 2 would equal 3, and this one had a y-intercept of 0. So when you had the same slopes but different y-intercepts, well, same slopes but different y-intercepts, you get that no solution set up. Now, you can you can go and graph it. You can also go and transform both of them into slope-intercept, but you could probably do it just as quickly with the substitution method if you're just on the lookout for, you know what, anytime that I get a zero timesing a variable and then it equals something that's not zero, I could just stop and say no solution, and that's all that I had to do right there. And in fact, we could probably do almost all of this in our head. But now we also need to take a look at the infinite solution setup, and that's where you graph two lines, and then you find out, you know what, it's the exact same line. There's actually two lines right here, but they're right on top of each other, so you can't really tell. But that means any point on these lines would basically make both of the equations true, so this is an infinite solution setup. It doesn't mean any point works, it means any point on these lines work because they're touching in more than one spot. So when we come over here and look at the example of infinite solutions, how can we see that when we're using the substitution method? Well, y equals negative 4x, so let me plug it into this y, and I'll pause the video and set it up for us. So there we go. Uh, I plugged the negative 4x in for the y spot. Keep in mind that this minus sign is not attached to that y. So that minus sign has to be there, but the y is actually equal to negative 4x, so this minus negative situation transforms itself into a plus 4x. And then when you combine like terms, we got the 0x. It is not enough to just have 0x there to go suddenly, oh, this is no solution. No, 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 no. Remember, when we were doing the no solution situation, I said, well, 0 times what could equal positive 6? Well, that's an impossibility. 0 times anything is going to be 0. And so that's the reason that we're going, oh, there's no solution, because we can never come up with a number to multiply 0 by to get positive 6. This situation's a little bit different. It's 0x equaling 0. 
Well, I don't care what number you put in for x, 0 times anything really is 0. So there's more than one solution for what x could be. And if there's more for one solution for what x could be, that's going to be infinite. So it's infinite solutions. And it doesn't mean that like you can plug in any number for x and y. What it means is, is that you, if, if, if we plugged in like 0 for x, then it's probably going to be 0.5 for y. If we plugged 1 in for x, then it's going to be like uh, 1.6 or 1.7 right there. If we plug 3 in for x, then it would be like a, a 4 on this relationship that's graphed. And this relationship has no um, relation to, to this example that we did for the infinite solutions. So please just be on the lookout for when you get zero times a variable equaling a zero, that would be infinite solutions. When I get zero times a variable equaling something that's not zero, that's a no solution. I'm also going to go through and show you uh, one other situation that it could look at. As I said, it did not have to be an x variable. It could also be a y variable. So let's look at this. Instead of an x, what if it was 0 times y equals 10? Well, could I times 0 by any number to get 10? No. So this would be a no solution setup right here. Okay. It's, it's when a 0 times a variable equals a number that's not 0, we would say that's no solution. Same thing over here. Well, I can't multiply 0 by anything to get negative 3. It's always going to be 0. So this is going to be a no solution setup. But if I looked at this situation down here of 0 times y equals 0, yeah, uh, any number times 0 will get you 0. So I know that this one would be an infinite solution setup, and it's very similar to the 0x equals 0. Well, same thing for 0y equals 0. That's an infinite. But when I looked at the 0x equals something that's not a 0, that's a no solution. And that's what I'm trying to show you down here is that when you get 0y equaling this number, it's just it's an impossibility. You're never going to be able to find that perfect number to get you 10 for the product. So be on the lookout for that in the substitution method, and you won't fall for the no solution or infinite solution setups.